Hi, my name is Brianna Bigley, and I have spent most of my career working in the vines and wineries of St. Helena, California, and am currently the assistant winemaker at Patson Hall. In addition to my work in the wine industry, I teach climate change and business courses at UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business. In this video, we'll discuss how increasing temperatures due to climate change affect grape vines and wine quality. As we discussed in previous videos, temperature maximums and minimums are increasing in the Napa Valley and throughout the world. As growers, we're in touch with the land in a way that others aren't. And over the last decade, many have questioned our vines' abilities to adapt to the changing climate. Part of this concern lies in how our valley was planned and the identity given to it by the Winkler Index. The Winkler Index, which many are familiar with, was developed in the 1940s and is a heat summation index that classifies wine growing regions based on growing degree days. For grapes, growing degree days represents the sum of a daily maximum and minimum divided by two and then minus 50, the base temperature needed to grow grapes. Growing degree days blend away a day's temperature maximum by combining it with the minimum and don't take into consideration that grapes have a maximum temperature threshold for survival. At times, Napa Valley now reaches above the optimum development thresholds for photosynthesis and other grape development pathways. This means that growing degree days, and therefore the Winkler Index, are losing their relevancy because of climate change. While climate change has much in store for our planet and our community, for the moment, we'll focus on the effects extreme weather has on the Napa Valley. Specifically, we're going to talk about heat waves. As seen in these graphics, California has increasingly experienced more heat waves, longer heat waves, and hotter heat waves. These heat waves have sweeping effects on the vine. As temperatures rise, vines cool themselves via evapotranspiration. Stomata in the canopy, and depending on the time of year, berries, open and release water into the air. In essence, vines sweat to cool themselves. The ability of a vine to cool itself through evapotranspiration depends on a few things. One is morphology. Some varietals are isohedric, and when stress conditions get too high, they close their stomata. Others, like Cabernet Sauvignon, are anisohedric. Under high stress conditions and high vapor pressure deficit, these vines do not close their stomata. Stomata have to stay open for a vine to cool itself. However, it can be detrimental to the health of the plant if stomates remain open and the vine continues to transpire without access to water. Without available water in the soil, the plant can overextend itself, breaking the water column, causing cavitation, and in extreme cases, vine death. While this is the most extreme scenario, extreme heat alters the vine in many other ways. For grapevines, the optimal temperature for photosynthesis is between 77 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Once temperatures reach 104 degrees Fahrenheit and above, proteins essential to photosynthesis begin to break down and photosynthesis is reduced. As the vine shifts its focus away from the production of carbohydrates and secondary metabolites, the accumulation of sugar and anthocyanins is decoupled. Let's take a look at some figures that parse out what this means for our fruit. As seen in the graphic, increasing temperatures have a multifold effect on pH. First, the optimal temperature range for malic acid accumulation in developing berries is between 68 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and at temperatures greater than 104 degrees Fahrenheit, malic acid begins to degrade in the fruit. Second, another acid, oxalic acid, is also sensitive to heat and similar to malic acid will degrade at high temperatures. Finally, heat stress during grape maturity also causes berry potassium concentrations to increase. The effect of heat is not limited to acid alone. It also extends to anthocyanins, aroma compounds, and sugars. The optimal temperature for anthocyanin development is between 68 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and elevated temperatures have a threefold effect on total anthocyanins. Extreme heat after berry set can delay the onset of anthocyanin synthesis, and once color compounds form, they, as well as aroma compounds, degrade at temperatures above 99 degrees Fahrenheit. 2022 was emblematic of this second issue. After the early September heat wave, the fruit collected by UC Davis researchers had total anthocyanin levels lower than that of Verasion samples. Even before Verasion, heat waves can alter gene regulation that promotes the production of different anthocyanins. At high temperatures, red anthocyanins, like cyanidins, are formed more than purple-toned anthocyanins, like malvidins. This is especially important considering darker-toned anthocyanins are more stable and less prone to oxidation and thermal degradation. In short, heat stress means we make less stable color and we get to keep less color. Right now, you may be asking, what can we as growers do to limit these staggering effects of extreme heat on our vines? The solutions range from prohibitively expensive to manageable. First is misters, which can reduce temperatures by between 18 to 22 degrees Fahrenheit compared to ambient temperature. As many of you have also seen, there's shade cloth, which depending on the color can reduce cluster temperatures by almost seven degrees Fahrenheit. Both misters and shade cloth are easy to point at solutions, but there are many other ways we can cool our vines. Trellis architecture, for example, can be altered to provide shading to the fruit and the ground and can be more economical. A 2022 UC Davis study found that VSP trellises can reduce yield, increase sunburn, and decrease berry color. High wire trellises, on the other hand, can provide more shade and also require less water. Cover cropping is also a fantastic way to reduce heat stress on the vine. On a 102 degree day, the soil of tilled rows can be up to 20 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than that of mowed rows. This is incredibly important since heat from the soil radiates up into the canopy. Many growers are concerned about water competition from cover crops. Sure, this can occur, but it doesn't have to. The effect of tilling to reduce competition for water depends on the cover crops planted. Currently, many vineyard covers include C3 grass species. These plants are good for the winter, during which we want them to grow. However, they have high moisture requirements. C4 species, on the other hand, are more adapted to hot, dry environments and can be left throughout the summer with diminished fears over competition. Finally, one of our most powerful tools in mitigating heat is preheat irrigation. 
As we discussed earlier in this video, stomata have to stay open for a vine to cool. We've also talked about how heat radiates off our soils and into our canopies. By irrigating ahead of a heat wave, two things are accomplished. One, the vine has enough water to keep its stomates open. And two, the ground cools the canopy via evapotranspiration rather than heating it radiatively. This dual mechanism is essential and the maximum benefits only occur if irrigation happens before heat rather than during it. I'll leave you all with one last message surrounding a somewhat well-propagated misconception. Many believe that as the earth warms, agriculture can just shift towards the cooler poles. However, this solution is not quite so simple. As can be seen in Canada's Okanagan, where Bordeaux varietals like Cabernet Franc have gained traction. A freeze during 2023 reduced yields by 54%. And in 2024, temperatures sat at or below a dormant bud killing negative four degrees Fahrenheit for multiple days. The damage from this most recent freeze is still yet to be fully realized, but many now question the future of the region. This highlights that in a changing world, what matters most is how robust cultivars are in their response to extremes, what we do to mitigate these extremes, and the actions we take to combat climate change and reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Thanks for watching and happy growing.